first playoff game ever. I think six of your teammates, it was it was your first one ever. What, what did that feel like out there on the floor in that environment? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, as soon as we ran out, I, I got chill bumps from seeing the crowd, how loud it was, the whiteout. Um, just being able to experience that, having my dad in the crowd, him being able to experience that with me, it, it was amazing. You move on now to game two, though. As you guys kind of look back at game one and, and move forward, what are some big takeaways for you guys as a group? Yeah, um, I think that we can uh, always grow through every game. Um, so like that's something that coach has been saying all season. I'm sure, I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing it too about stacking possessions. Uh, but um, there's a lot to learn. Uh, being aggressive, uh, playing team defense, it's five against five. So we just got to go out there and play the way we want to play. Going back to the crowd, it, what's it like hearing 18,000 people barking at the same time? Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. It's uh, Actually, we talk about it every time it happens. We look at each other like, that's that's crazy. But we think it's really cool, and uh, I feel like it, it gets us going. Just as much as it gets them going, it gets us going, too. And obviously, you had some battles with Valanchunas. Just what was that dynamic like, having to defend him and be physical with him throughout the game? I love those type of games. I love games where you can go in there and play physical. They're not calling fouls. You're chesting up. You're hitting each other. You're boxing out, doing those things. And those are the type of games I love playing in, and I, I can't wait. J. Will, obviously, like he has some level of touch, but to the degree he hit those shots last game, like how sustainable do you think it is when you look back on himself? Uh, I mean, he's everybody in the NBA is great players. Uh, he's a great player and can't put anything past him. We just got to play defense and do the best that we can to stop him. Jay, well, you know, a huge identity of this team is being switchable and kind of positionless. At what point in your basketball upbringing did you realize that the league was kind of shifting this way and you needed to be more versatile? Yeah, um, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like around college is when I started figuring that out. Um, and then I got here, of course, there's guys bigger than me switching and um, I'm playing center and I'm a short center. So I realized I got to be more uh, diverse on the defensive end, be able to do more things. And I think it adds a different uh, aspect to the game when you're able to switch with the five men. Is there something uh, in the playoff game that stood out to you is that, hey, this is different. Just this, how you treat the game, how the game develops. So just is there something that said, hey, this is what Playoff basketball is kind of like. Um, I feel like the first thing that I noticed was the crowd. The crowd, the difference in the crowd is like it's night and day from regular season, and then just the physicality. The phys physicality steps up to a whole nother notch, and uh, I feel like the whole team, everybody plays physical. You mentioned that that physicality, also your dad being in the building, it reminded me of the story growing up where his shoulder like went out of socket yeah. playing against you. Did you? Did any of that stuff run through your mind? Did you look up at the, in the stands to, to look at your dad during the game, any of that? Yeah, um, I always look up at my dad when we're playing a uh, pregame video on the scoreboard. No matter how many games he's come, he comes to every home game. He records it every game. Like, it doesn't change. He records it every game. And just seeing my dad enjoy the games and seeing him be able to enjoy what's happening, seeing his son on the court, like, it, it, it makes my heart happen. Any of your siblings make it? No, nah, none of my siblings, not yet. Two days off in a row in the regular season is a rarity. Now you have two days off between game one, game two. What does that weight feel like for you and the guys? Um, I think it's good. It gives us uh, two days to recover, two days for us to get better, two days for us to uh, look at last game and figure out what we want to do different. So I feel like it's good for us. Mark yesterday was just talking about how good the first shot defense looked and then obviously pointed out just the amount of second chance points. Like, how do you strike that kind of balance toward perfection in terms of trying to cover both areas? Yeah, I think that our first shot defense is good because we have good defenders. We have Lou, that's the first team defender. We have Doug, that's a great defender. Shea's a great defender. We have Chet down low, great defender. K Rich, K so like, go down the line. We have great defenders. And then uh, rebounding, getting defensive rebound, that's a team effort. Of course, they have a great big down there in Valachunas that's going to use his weight, push the big inside. He's going to try to go for those offensive rebounds, but it's all five of us. All five of us have to attack the uh, defensive glass and get those rebounds. I think you and Chet combined for double-digit three-point attempts just in that matchup uh, with Valanciunas, if they're going to sink him back. if you, it, it, How important is it for you guys to uh, get those looks and not hesitate taking those? Yeah, uh, of course, we're getting, those looks are created because we have such a great guard play out there. Um, you have to worry about Shea coming off the pick roll. You have to worry about Dub. And um, with them coming off the pick and roll, we're going to get good shots. And then our teammates install the confidence in us to shoot those shots. Our coach wants us to shoot those shots. And... I think when you have two guys that are confident in shooting and a team that's confident of you shooting the ball, you're going to shoot those shots. 
Does more, this feel more like a business as usual thing now that you've gotten that first game out of the way? You know, I know last week you had all the waiting to see who you were going to play and all that, all the energy and hype. Now, is it just game time or what are you thinking? Of course, we know it's the playoffs. We know there's another level to it, but uh, also we got to go into this game just play, being ourselves, playing our game, playing the Thunder way and being the team that we've been throughout the whole season, just stacking those possessions. Mark was just asked about Lou's dedication yesterday and he, he said he's like a a really pure person, almost to the point where he thinks he's just like never lied. Like, how much of that do you agree with? On if he's a pure person, that he never lied. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Lou don't lie. <laughs> Lou's, Lou's a pure person uh, for sure. Uh, Lou might. You look at Lou, he's, you think he's this tough guy that doesn't talk to anybody and doesn't joke around. He's always playing defense. He's physical. He might get a tech here and there, but Lou's like a, a great dude outside, of, off the court, and. Uh, I think that's really what our whole team, but especially Lou, he's a great dude. From the first day, I, that's one of the first things I said is I thought Lou was going to be this dude that didn't talk to nobody, just played hard on the court, but he's in the group. He's joking around with us. He's sending memes to our group chat, like regardless of what it is, Lou, Lou's always been that joking guy. Hey, well, um, sorry. Yeah. When he does have to tap into that toughness, what does that look like? <laughs> Every night, which I'll see on defense, uh, picking up the best player, uh, guarding, fighting through screens, uh, getting under screens, over screens taking on that challenge every night. What, what's that look like in here? In here, the same thing. He uh, pushes everybody to be better. Uh, he talks, he does those little things. He's a leader on and off the court. What are some of the memes that he sends you guys? Um, it's different things throughout the season. Sometimes it's like the barking stuff or like the, uh, they'll put stuff, like when Gallo barked, they sent, like we sent a meeting and it's our group <laughs> chat, like just different things throughout the season. So Josh said that uh, um, you're not a uh, lot of slight threat. He's what hating. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what Giz talking about. I'm a lot of threat. <laughs> Are you going to try to do the alley oop something? We'll, we'll see. I, I've been talking to him throughout the whole season, trying to get them to throw me one, but if it happens, it happens. Uh, I'm a lot of threat and Giz not a lot of threat. So. <laughs> <laughs> is it good. more relaxed today or you know now that you got game one under your your belt does it feel a little more relaxed around here um i wouldn't say relax uh i think that we go into every game with the same mind or uh same mind and same looking at the same way um zero zero we look at every game that way and we want to go into this game the same way we did last game critical moment in that late just tell me about your feelings as you you walked off the floor and um how, how you turned the page to game two uh, coming out with the win, uh, definitely a great feeling. You know, first playoff game, a lot of energy, a lot of uh, emotions. But um, next game is going to be, it could be different. You know, we just got to come in with a 0 0 mindset and uh, ready to play. Earlier in the year, Lou was telling us that you guys kind of have like a, a wing defenders group chat that you guys, you know, talk through different things. What's that like here when you got the same opponent now multiple times in a row, and um, you're obviously really familiar with these guys that you're playing against? Um, it's the same thing. Just keep watching the same. Well, not the same, but keep watching the clips and keep learning, seeing what they're doing differently, and go out there and play. Have you been able to just kind of like go back, look over that final sequence, and kind of look at it and see what you did there? Uh, definitely, <laughs> like seen it all day <laughs> for the past few days, but. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't perfect defense, but he missed a shot, so. What was it like just seeing the reaction from Lou after that moment of being able to see the missed shot and you closed out the game there? It was cool. You know, we don't really have many moments together, but <laughs> so that was that was fun. What do you think you learned the most from playing in a playoff game? Um, how crucial every possession is. Uh, during the regular season, you know, it's a lot more loose. You know, the scores are a lot higher, but playoffs, you know, everything is more compact and, and intense. Jason, yeah. a lot of you guys are very switchable defenders and everything. That's kind of how the league has shifted. At what point did you realize that that was going to be a priority in this modern NBA? Um, I knew it since I you know, came in. I was going to be one of the guys guarding some of the best players in the league. So um, no surprise there. We got, we got a lot of guys. With how much you're, how much you're kind of like, drowning in the same game plan for a team in a, in a series? Like, how much have you learned just about tendencies in a way that maybe you didn't in the regular season? Um, it's not much different. You know, they still got their main engines and, you know, their role players are still their, their role players. So, I mean, it's the same team, but they're just playing with more intensity.
you know, everybody talks about dreaming of getting that last second shot, making that shot at the end. But you strike me as the kind of guy that might have been the one that would dream of getting the stop. Are you that kind of guy that dreams of that kind of scenario where you're in that moment of defense? Uh, for sure. I have dreams about both of them, you know, and I finally got one under my belt, you know, getting, <laughs> getting the stop. Lou has a lot of experience doing that. They kind of called you into that switch. He he said yesterday, like a level of pride that guys take and the team takes around those moments uh, when, when players get into those situations. What was your mindset knowing that you were going to be one-on-one -on -one in that situation and, and knowing your teammates had your back too? Uh, the second time, it was don't let them score on you again. Uh, the first time, he got the best of me, so... Just the competitive state, just not letting him score on me again. What did you think of the crowd? Uh, it was unbelievable. They were loud the whole game. Um, high, they was highly like engaged with the game. You know, they started barking with you know Dub. Like it was unbelievable. I think you guys only played three games in the regular season where you scored under a hundred, lost all three of those games. I mean, what does it say about the the defense of? adjustments and playoffs and how hard it is to score in these playoffs? Uh, like I said earlier, everybody's coming in with more intensity and er no, nobody want to lose. So everybody's playing at their best. And one Shea got uh, 30 seconds left last game. It's kind of set up by him setting a screen. And we've seen that from him all season in those late game situations. I just want to kind of get your perspective again on him having practiced so many of those situations with Dub, with other players, uh, to the point that, that they can execute it that well late in a game that has such elevated stakes. Yeah, that's one of the system things that Shea's always been really good at is screening. Um, because of Isaiah, Dub, um, Chet, some of the, the guys we've layered on, he hasn't done it as much, not because of anything other than having other guys. Uh, but early on, I mean, that was that was like his best system skill is he was a great screener. We still use him to try to spring guys for layups uh, or get switches, and that's what we did in that one. And I think you got double-digit three-point attempts from Chet and Jay Will combined. I just want to ask you about sort of the importance of generating those shots that seem mostly uh, totally clean and um, the, the need to continue to just take those uh, no matter whether they're going down or not. Yeah, not just those two guys, but everybody. I mean, you Playoff game, physicality, good defense. You know, it's great shots are hard to come by. So if you get one, you got to shoot it. Shea took, um, I think, 14 uh, MIDI pull ups, went 50% on O's. Just with how many, I guess, how how much the possessions weigh in a game like that where you both score under 100, like, does the conversation change about him taking those shots, picking those spots? Like, what's the conversation like in this setting? I don't. I don't micromanage their shots. You know, I, I, we try to make sure that they're educated on what a good shot is for them. We want to make sure we're exploring possessions to try to get the best shots possible. Um, but sometimes you have to take those, and we have guys that can really shoot them at a high clip. So um, there really hasn't been a change in conversation. We always want to try to explore the best shots possible. Um, but if we can't get them, obviously, the other night, great defense, really physical. Um, Sometimes you have to you have to take those, and that is the best shot available on a possession. And if it is, we have guys that can make those shots. Mark, since you've been here, you've kind of been preaching versatility and positionless basketball. Like, when did you first notice that the league was shifting this way? Um, it's not a reaction to like a league shift. It's more of a reaction to the strengths of our roster. You know, so I think that's everybody's job is to maximize the team that they have. You know, and so. We have a, a positionless roster. We have guys that are very versatile that can do a lot of different things, not just on offense. You know, I think everybody assumes that you're talking about ball handling and shooting, but really it's defense too. And um, it, it's more of a roster conversation than it is. You know, if we didn't have a positionless roster, we wouldn't be playing a positionless style. You know, we'd be figuring out the best way to maximize the roster we have, and that's what we're doing. That being said, it does it does leave you in a little bit of a bind. When you deal with a guy like Valanchunas, uh, what needs to change against him? Or is that just a situation where he's just a big guy who's going to get some boards? We don't. I mean, you never want to concede anything. You know, we're never, like, trying to hand out points or rebounds to anybody. But, um, again, we have to keep the cost-benefit equation tilted in our favor. And so as long as the benefit of a lineup we play or a tactic we play is outweighing the cost of it in totality, we're going to stick with it. Um, 
the minute that the cost outweighs the benefit, that's when you have to adjust. And sometimes you ride through those things and sometimes you have to adjust them. The game usually tells you what to do. It's just a matter of reacting to it. Um, and that's what we'll continue to do, but we've done that all year. Yeah, it's not just like a New Orleans playoff series concept. Mark, you talked about Willie in the past, but now you've got a chance to coach against him in the playoffs. Just what impresses you the most about him and the way he runs that team? Uh, they don't make a lot of mistakes. They're very organized. Um, and he is a very principled person and coach, and that shows up with the way that the team plays and the way that he manages the roster, manages the team. Um, they've, not just this season, they've, they've endured – uh, quite a bit. They've had to overcome a lot of adversity uh, in the past. I mean, they've had uh, tough starts to the season. They've dealt with injuries at different times. And I've always just been impressed from afar at how steady he's able to keep that team, how motivated they stay, how hard they continue to play through all circumstances when things are going well, when things are going poorly. And I think that's a reflection of him. He talked on Sunday about the recruiting visit over here back in 2015, 16. I wouldn't have said it was recruiting. But, <laughs> okay. but when he was still figuring out if he wanted to get into coaching, whatnot, yeah. just what kind of stood out to you about him and just maybe what made you feel like he had the chops for you know, getting into this? Um, I just liked hanging with him. You know, he's a, uh, he's a really good guy. He's uh, got a lot of playing experience. He's got a lot of experiences uh, in that background, but he's very serious about coaching. You know, he had that from the beginning, and I think – uh, his ascent through the assistant coaching ranks and to become a head coach was very quick. Uh, and I think that's a reflection of how seriously he took it. You know, he didn't come in um, just trying to, you know, dip his toe in the water. He was very, very focused on becoming a good coach the minute he decided to uh, pursue that. And he has, he's forged himself into a very good coach uh, in a very short period of time. We were just talking to Jay Will, and he was talking about the physicality with Valanciunas. He loved it. Like, he loves those games where you can just be physical and the refs aren't calling it. What's it like having a guy who just relishes those those physical moments? Yeah, it's a little sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, no, he's great, you know. But, you know, he's a hooper, too. You know, he's not just like a brute. Yeah. You know, he's got skill. He keeps the ball moving. Um Made two threes the other night. You know, stepped into those shots with a lot of confidence. We have a lot of confidence in him shooting the ball, making decisions with the ball. So uh, there's more to him as a player, but the physicality is definitely a huge asset for us. And coming into the series, you talked about you know we're really focusing on ourselves. We focus on you know New Orleans a little bit, but now that you're going up against them again, does that balance shift at all, or does it kind of remain the same? No, I mean when I was referencing that, I was just more like you're going to win and lose with your identity and your habits, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the foundation to everything. Otherwise, why would you play the regular seasons, you know? And um, we have to be really good at those things. We have to be really good at who we are. We have to be really good at the habits that we've built. We have to trust those habits in pressure situations. Um, and then on top of that, you layer a game plan and you layer the adjustments. But um, if, if your whole deal is the game plan and the adjustments, then, you know, those things will let you down. And so uh, it's a balance, but, you know, we, we prioritize us. You know, it doesn't mean we ignore the opponent or we overlook adjustments at all, but we certainly prioritize being who we are. Mark, maybe this will be the the last question about the, the challenge and what happened there, but um, in talking to people, they make it seem like you've maybe studied the rule book from front to back. Like, with that, uh, when a certain loophole like that surfaces, like, does it make you that much more shocked? Um... Well, I think it's my job to know the rules, yeah. you know, not just the rules on challenges, but when you're interacting with officials, you know, you don't, they know the rules, you know, so you don't want to not have credibility because you're arguing like a caveman. I mean, you want them to respect your competence. Um, and I try to make sure I know that stuff. Um, my understanding, of, you know, we did get clarity on that. There's the way that the rule is going to be applied moving forward is the way that they applied it in that game, not the way that they applied it in Utah. I was just confused because it was it was applied differently in the same season. Um, and so that was my confusion. But I said that I wanted to get clarity on that. We have clarity on it now. That will factor into my decision making as we move forward. With the two-day break, any concerns about overthinking how game two may be played out? Um. Yeah, I have concerns over me overthinking, and I have concerns over the guys overthinking. And you know, they're they're out here running around doing their thing. So um, we just have to not get in their way. You know, we got to keep things simple. Uh, as we did going into, the, I thought we did a good job of that in the prep week. You know, with a lot of time, finding out the opponent late was helpful in that. 
Um, but we try to keep things. We want them to go out there and compete together. You know, that's the most important thing. We want to play to who we are. That's the most important thing. Um, and so these adjustments are just, they need to be additive and they need to enhance that, but not get in the way of it. Following up on adjustments um, in these high intensity, high emotional moments in the playoffs, I know you said that Dub wants to challenge everything. Is there any challenge, no pun intended, of like resisting an urge to be impulsive, like throwing a challenge out there? No, I mean, that's my job is to figure, but I'm going to be as aggressive as I was in the regular season. You know, like I'm not going to adjust. The, if, if, I, if I thought it was impulsive to do it early in the regular season, I wouldn't have done it. You know, so, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to ride with that philosophy because I think it's the best thing regardless of, you know, when the games are. If I can try to get two points back in the first quarter, I'm going to do it. You, you mentioned the concept. You mentioned the concept of overthinking uh, a few times over the past couple of weeks now. Have you found yourself throughout the season, you know, having those instances of maybe overthinking? Me? Yeah. Uh, well, I, you want to be fully prepared. It's just a matter of, like, um, streamlining that for the team. You know, so I don't mind our staff being, like, really dug into the details and really over-prepared for the opponent. I need to know every rule in the rule book. I need to, I need to be you know, fully prepared, it's when you start dumping that on the team that you can start to get in the way of their ability to just go out there and compete. And so that's our challenge is like, I'm sure New Orleans is doing the same thing. They know everything about us. You know, it's just a matter of how do you get that to the team in a way that allows them to execute with a free mind and compete with a free mind. And that's everybody's challenge this time of year.